Right now live here on the WHS 1119 at 11 o'clock on this Monday night of Derby Week. We've got soaking rains moving through Kentuckiana at the moment. And 5-0 Tuesday tomorrow is out of the gate at Churchill Downs in the afternoon. Louisville stay at the track. But we also know the real finish line you're interested in for the giant crowds is at the end of the week. So we are getting you ready for the 150th running of the Kentucky Oaks and Derby right here on the night team. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm Doug Prophet. Meteorologist Colleen Peterson is tracking the overnight rain. And uh, Colleen, I know you have plans to go out to the track, so you've got a vested interest invested in this important interest. forecast, the most important <laughs> of the week. Fingers crossed. And really, it's going to be nice tomorrow for 5 Tuesday. Thankfully, that rain is going to clear out. We are looking a little wet for Oaks. However, it shouldn't deter you away. We're going to time it out for you to make sure that you are prepared because regardless, it's going to be a nice time at the track. We are tracking some rain right now, not even seeing any lightning. Zooming on into Jefferson County over downtown. This is the heaviest of rain that we're going to see with the system. So over downtown, some downpours over to Shively up to New uh, Albany and down to Fairdale as well. That'll be moving off to the east. Some light showers over Palmyra and areas off to the south. We are seeing some heavier downpours as well. So situated just to the west of east town you're about to see a downpour here in just about 30 minutes but all you're going to see is rain no severe weather that's the kind of weather that we like to see especially at the end of the month of april so the rain is going to clear out just in time for 50 tuesday by the time you head out to the track in the afternoon should be seeing increasing sunshine temperatures in the upper 70s i'm timing out the rain for the end of the week as we head towards the oaks and the kentucky derby coming up doug Today we lost some heroes that are out to just simply trying to keep our community safe. The still developing tragedy in North Carolina, the somber procession of law enforcement tonight in Charlotte. And tonight we have learned that a fourth law enforcement officer has now died following a shooting in the standoff earlier this afternoon. Four others were hurt. A total of eight officers shot today. The shootout happened as members of a U.S. Marshals Task Force were serving a warrant for a felon wanted for possessing a firearm. The Charlotte Mecklenburg police chief says the suspect fired on the officers as they approached the house. He was killed in the front yard. A second person inside the home then started firing at law enforcement, some of whom were trying to rescue the injured officers. They lost their lives after they gave us the opportunity to be in a safe place and they lost their lives. These are people that care deeply about what they've done for a profession and now today we have to say to them how much we are grateful for what they have done. The standoff ended after three hours inside home. Inside the home, the police chief says they found two additional people who are being questioned. The names of those killed and injured have not yet been released. New photos and other stunning details released today by Indiana State investigators. It's showing a deeper look into the alleged credit card abuse by the former Clark County, Indiana Sheriff Jamie Knoll at the expense of taxpayers. WHS 1119's Alex Dieterer says the audit by Indiana State Board of Accounts also wants Jamie Knoll to pay back millions of dollars. So what are we talking about? What's that adding up to, Alex? Well, Doug, according to that state audit that was released today, Jamie Knoll will need to pay back over $3 million. The report shows Knoll spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on clothing, food, and home improvements. And now the state is requesting he pay it all back. Over the span of 1,825 days, a state audit says former Clark County Sheriff Jamie Knoll unlawfully spent nearly $3.5 million. Some of the money was spent on clothes, 83000 at Macy's alone. Loan, 323,000 on travel, 53,000 at a cigar lounge, 20,000 for political donations, 16,000 for household appliances, and more than $181,000 from New Chapel funds that investigators say Noel spent on college tuition and rent for two of his daughters. All of the money coming from New Chapel EMS accounts. The special investigation report released by the Indiana State Board of Accounts looked at the purchases made by Knoll with New Chapel EMS money between January 1, 2019 and December 31, 2023. The report found that Knoll had little to no oversight of his spending and found no evidence the New Chapel EMS Board of Directors had any function. The four person board did not approve contracts, did not approve purchases, and reviewed no budget since 2019. 
scene. The report gives a look inside the Knowles barn, where Jamie stored his classic car collection. You can see cars stacked on top of each other, including this vintage police car wrapped in plastic. This is footage from last Friday, when tow trucks on Knowles property took away multiple vehicles. You can also see the single engine airplane Knoll bought in 2022 for $25,000 under his name. The report reveals that he then attempted to transfer ownership of the plane to New Chapel EMS, only after multiple search warrants were carried out by ISP in 2023. Jamie Knoll was the primary cardholder to a New Chapel EMS American Express credit card, but he was one of five people who had access to the card. Jamie's daughter, Casey Knoll, Jamie's wife, Misty Knoll, current New Chapel EMS director, Kevin Wilkerson, and current New Chapel president, Matt Owen. On top of Jamie Knoll's nearly $3.5 million in unlawful charges, Investigators say Misty Knoll racked up $663,000 in mostly clothing and jewelry purchases, and Casey spent $109,000. The report asks Wilkerson to pay back $40,000 of New Chapel money he spent on personal purchases. In a response to the audit, Utica Township Volunteer Firefighters Association claims Wilkerson thought Knoll was gifting him the funds. Wilkerson will not be charged. Jamie, Missy, Misty, and Casey Knoll, on the other hand, are all charged with multiple felonies and are awaiting trial. All have pleaded not guilty. In studio, Alex Dieterer of the WHS 1119 on your side. Alex, thank you very much. Also new tonight, since 6, JCPS is looking to change start times for next school year, narrowing them from 8 to 3. Now, there are two scenarios the district is currently considering. Both would have start times of 7.30 a.m., 8.40 a.m., and 9.40 a.m. No high schools would start at 9.40 a.m. Under the first scenario, 49 schools would have new start times. 24 of those would change by an hour or more. Under the second scenario, 87 schools would change their start times. 63 would be by an hour or more. The district says even with the changes, there will still be delays next school year because of the transportation plan. JCPS is having a virtual information session about all this tomorrow from 6 until 7 p.m. District leaders will explain the two proposals and then take questions. And you can watch it live on YouTube. If you'd like to see your child's school, uh, then the start time, which time they may be going to school next year, we have pro the proposals for you posted at WHAS11.com. By the way, the school's district is still working to hire more bus drivers, a challenge Kentucky's incoming education commissioner discussed today. Robbie Fletcher says while he believes driver pay is fair, he acknowledges the difficulties in recruiting more bus drivers. And I think that uh, Superintendent Polio is working on that. And I think he will continue to work on that with his board. But I think it comes down to people. Uh, it may not be a money issue for Louisville. It may be more about how do you recruit those people. So let's look at what efforts are going on now. And let's see how we can, as KDE, can help support those efforts. Fletcher still has a couple of months on the job as superintendent of the Lawrence County School System in Eastern Kentucky. He'll begin his role as the full-time state commissioner on July 1st. It is officially Derby Week in Louisville, and the countdown is on to get ready for well over 100,000 racing fans on each day. Oaks and Derby, as we've got it on the screen, four days, 19 hours on the way. New tonight, we found South End residents excited for the financial rush expected on those huge days. They know this year is only once in history, Derby 150. WHS 11 night teams, Taylor Woods and photojournalist Addy Hill talk to residents about the race to get you to park your car with them. Derby week is here and residents near Churchill Downs are ready to cash in on the revenue. I'm so excited. I can't wait till Wednesday gets here and then you got Derby. Michael Wigington has been charging fans to park in his front and backyard on Central Avenue for the last four years. Thursday we're charging $40 a car and Friday we are charging $50 a car and then Saturday is $65 a car. He will also be selling beer and firing up the grill with all kinds of meats. I'm going to have ribs, chicken, hamburgers, fries, hot dogs. Around the corner on Burton Avenue, Miguel Rodriguez and his family are clearing their lot to park vehicles. In Derby, $100, $150. More than 15 cars can fit in this yard from here all the way down right near the entrance to Churchill Downs. Rodriguez's mom will sell fans for the expected hot weather and flip-flops while he plans to carpool fans back and forth. You pay me like 
$50 and I'm moving you. Down the street is Gary Smith. His lot can park up to six RVs. It's not, it's not real big, but it's, it's, it's big enough. Smith looks forward to this time of year every year. He plans to make a nice profit from the RVs and cars that will be parked. Uh, we can hold about 15 cars. Central Avenue will be the only street closed to on-street parking, but Metro Councilwoman Jennifer Chappell says parking is allowed in those residence yards. If there is a street that's closed. Please reach out to my office. We'll take care of it. Chapel is asking everyone to be courteous and mindful of their actions. Take in all the local flavor, but also be respectful. These are neighborhoods that we're going into. As she looks forward to welcoming in hundreds of thousands of fans in her district this week. Boom, boom, right at the gate. In Louisville, Taylor Woods, WHAS 1119 on your side. <laughs> Great to see that excitement, and uh, they take care of a lot of people. Many of those racing fans have to get to Louisville for the Oaks and Derby, and that's where the Muhammad Ali International Airport comes right in. This coming Sunday is generally the airport's busiest day of the year, and we may see a record breaker. TSA officials say they're expecting 18,000 people to come through our airport that day alone. Seven TSA lanes will be open during Derby Week, up from five last year to help with the Derby 150 increase. The one thing I like to get out there is expect, expect craziness. <laughs> I mean, it is the busiest day. And you can see behind us, it's a relatively small checkpoint. So there will be times where we will have wait times uh, on both Sunday and Monday. Just because the amount of volume that's going to come to the checkpoint is going to be more than the checkpoint can handle. On Monday, TSA says they could see as many as 11,000 passengers. That's also an increase from years past. Well, it's a big year, and the WHAS 11 news team is ready to bring it to you. Our special coverage begins this Friday as we celebrate the 150th running of the Kentucky Oaks. We'll be live from the Kentucky Derby Museum. Our special coverage begins at 3 that afternoon. Then on Saturday, Derby morning, we've got a full lineup. At 6 a.m., our special presentation, The Greatest Two Minutes, gets us out of the gate. We then join you for our traditional live coverage from the Derby Museum at 7. And then at 10, it's a special edition of Great Day Live, coming to you live from the 45th Farmington Derby Breakfast. It's Derby 150 in fashion on WHAS 11.